Have you ever wondered why, contrary to Darwinian survival of the fittest thinking, bacteria and viruses aren't just eating us alive? Challenging this traditional understanding, we delve into the world of microbes, which, despite their rapid reproduction rates, seem to be more allies than foes. The Darwinian principle, survival of the fittest, suggests that the strongest and most adaptable species thrive. This principle, when applied to bacteria and viruses, poses an intriguing question. Given their ability to reproduce and evolve rapidly, often within a few short hours, how is it that we, multi-celled organisms with generation times of at least 20 years have been able to evolve and resist infection? This paradox was eloquently articulated by Dr. Randolph Nessa in a conversation with Richard Dawkins, sparking a fascinating line of inquiry into our relationship with these microorganisms. As we explore this question, we discover a surprising revelation. It seems that instead of being our enemies, bacteria and viruses are in fact helping us. In a 2012 article, the NIH Human Microbiome Project revealed something fascinating about our relationship with microbes. We've all heard of bacteria and viruses, often in the context of disease and harm. But have you ever stopped to consider that these tiny organisms might actually be essential allies in our survival? The Human Microbiome Project, an ambitious initiative launched by the National Institutes of Health, sought to understand the complex interplay between us, humans, and the trillions of microbes that call our bodies home. Their findings were remarkable. Each of us is a walking ecosystem teeming with a diverse array of bacteria, viruses, and other microorganisms. They inhabit every corner of our bodies, from our skin to our gut and even up our noses. While some of these can cause sickness, the vast majority live in harmony with us, providing vital functions essential for our survival. Take our gut microbiome, for instance. These bacteria help us digest food, extracting nutrients that our own bodies can't process. They even synthesize certain vitamins that we can't produce on our own. Without these bacteria, we wouldn't be able to fully benefit from the food we eat. Our microbiome also plays a crucial role in our immune system. These microbes train our immune cells, teaching them to distinguish between harmful pathogens and harmless substances. This helps our body mount a swift and effective response when we encounter disease-causing agents. In terms of our development, these bacteria play a part too. There's evidence to suggest that our microbiome influences everything from our growth rates to our moods and even our brain function. So contrary to what we've been led to believe, these microbes are not just passive passengers. They're active contributors to our health and well-being. They're part of us, shaping our lives in ways we are only beginning to understand. So, rather than being harmful, bacteria are actually doing many good things for us. This shift in perspective from viewing bacteria as solely harmful to recognizing their essential role in our survival directly contradicts the survival of the fittest thinking that is central to Darwinian theory. In fact, pathogens are now found to be the result of devolution, not evolution, from these helpful bacteria. A 2014 article titled, The Independent Evolution of Harmful Organisms from One Bacterial Family stated, we commonly think bacteria must gain genes to allow them to become pathogen. However, we now know that the loss of genes and the streamlining of the pathogen's metabolic capabilities are key features in the evolution of these disease-causing bacteria. Our dependence on bacteria extends beyond our bodies to the world at large. The significance of microbial life is beautifully summed up in a 2008 article by Paul G. Falkowski, a professor of geological sciences at Rutgers. He asserts that microbes are the engines that drive Earth's biogeochemical cycles. These tiny life forms play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of our planet. They are involved in everything from the decomposition of organic materials to the production of oxygen, to the cycling of nitrogen. Without these microbial processes, life as we know it would cease. Humans, with all our complexity and technology, simply cannot replicate the global catalysis and environmental transformations that these microbes provide. They are the silent custodians of Earth, facilitating processes that make our world habitable. As it turns out, we need bacteria to keep our planet running. So next time you think of bacteria, remember, they're not just within us, they're all around us, quietly shaping our world. And what about viruses? Are they as essential as bacteria? It may surprise you, but yes, they certainly are. A 2020 article titled, 
Why the World Needs Viruses to Function highlights this beautifully. The article asserts that the vast majority of viruses are not pathogenic to humans and many play integral roles in propping up ecosystems. They even maintain the health of individual organisms, everything from fungi and plants to insects and humans. As virologist Susana lopez Cheriton puts it, we live in a balance, in a perfect equilibrium, and viruses are a part of that. I think we'd be done without viruses. Furthermore, a 2018 article titled, Trillions Upon Trillions of Viruses Fall from the Sky Each Day emphasizes the central role that viruses play in everything from our immune system to climate regulation. So, while certain viruses can make us sick, many are absolutely integral for our survival and the ecosystem. So where does this leave us in our understanding of bacteria and viruses? We've journeyed through a paradigm shift, redefining these tiny life forms not as our adversaries but as crucial allies. From the human microbiome aiding our development, immunity, and nutrition, to the global impact of microbes driving Earth's biogeochemical cycles. Even viruses, often villainized, play integral roles in maintaining ecosystems and our own health. It seems that rather than being our enemies as they were presupposed to be within Darwinian theory, bacteria and viruses are actually our essential allies.